Hi everyone. So yeah, um, this is my very complicated name. Um, my name is Jean Baptiste, but everyone can call me JB. Actually, um, I've done this joke a few times, but in Lithuanian, Jean is Jonas and Baptiste is Krishkitoyas, so I'm actually Jonas Krishkitoyas. Um, but yeah, you can call me JB. It's much easier. And then be before to um, to come to to Lithuania, I actually used to live and work in Denmark. I, I, um, I'm a French uh, guy, but I help a French company to basically enter the Danish, uh, the Northern Europe market based in Denmark. And for a French company, North is actually everything above Belgium. This is when people stop speaking French, right? And I was like, you have to picture me. I was like the most arrogant French guy you can ever meet. I was 21 years old. They sent me to Copenhagen to open the, the north of, uh, of Europe office. And uh, before that, I was working as an intern, and I just exploded the market over there, right? So I was the most arrogant French guy you can meet. I was taking the plane every single week, I had my car, my office, and two assistants. And I was making huge deals. So of course, I thought I'm the smartest guy in the room. I'm gonna, uh, in the room always. I'm going to quit my job, take a loan, start my own business. We went successfully bankrupt in 10 months. So then I was back on the job market, and uh, I knew I know how to sell, and I had a lot of debts. So at that time, there was this uh, crazy, you know, um, growing startup moving from the north of Denmark to, uh, to Copenhagen um, called Trustpilot, and I was the fourth sales guy that they hired, and their, their, their pitch was quite simple. They said they cannot basically pay, you, pay me much, but they have no cap on commission, so if you really know how to sell, you, you can uh, basically pay back all your debts. And um, this pitch kind of uh, sounded interesting to me. And the long story short is we grew the sales team from four to 150 salespeople. In just two years, we went from 50 to 5,000 customers. And I brought 600 customers myself. So of course, I paid back all my debts in way faster uh, time than I was supposed to be. And I also learned how to build a fucking sales machine. right? And just to give you an idea of how an 150 sales people sales floor looks like. Have you seen the movie The Wolf of Wall Street? Yeah. So all sales floors were the same, except that we had no prostitute and no poor cocaine, and, and we were selling a real product, right? But then eventually, when I came to Lithuania, I had the chance to work with Practica Capital on over 40 founders, and I realized that there is some tips that can I basically uh, use and reshare every time with early stage founders, and that's pretty much what I want to talk about with you today. And today, I run, uh, I'm, I'm involved with two, uh, two companies, uh, Evergrowth, which actually support very large sales team with lead research services. And now where I spend uh, all my time is actually with 70 Ventures, where we actually invest in early stage uh, founders with early stage products that are ready to monetize, and we help them to go to market and accelerate their revenue. And the, the first, basically, uh, tip that we can give to early stage founders is to actually sell your vision and not your product. Because your product is actually boring. And when you talk about your product, you actually talk about features, and there is nothing more boring than to talk about features. And also what's important for you to acknowledge at the beginning of your startup journey is that people will actually buy you. And if you are not able to sell to your first or second degree connection when you start your business with just a simple PowerPoint, you are probably in the wrong industry. right? Very, very important to focus on the persona and focus on the vision that you sell. And why you should sell your vision? Because probably your customers will know more about what features they want and your vision is just a way to basically get the feedback you need to develop the features the customer wants. An example I always take um, with founders to uh, basically sell the vision and not the product is, um, you know the, the video game um, Mario from Nintendo, right? So how to focus on the vision and not the product is when Mario eats the mushroom, he becomes Super Mario, right? So the product is a mushroom. And then the features of the product are quite boring. It's a gray mushroom, it's big like that, and it that has a taste like this, right? These are features, super boring if I have to sell mushroom. But the benefits and the vision of the mushroom is that when Mario eats the mushroom, he becomes Super Mario and he can do some crazy shit. And this is what you need to sell, right? This is the vision of what happened after I eat the mushroom. 
And of course, when you sell a product on your early stage startup, always set low expectations because very often when they get into your vision, there is a lot of things that you can deliver and stuff that you cannot deliver, right? And the reality works more like this, right? So this is what they expect and this is what you're going to deliver. So I will always set low expectation and also I agree that it is maybe not a fit right now and understand that we can solve one problem very well and that's this problem, right? And fo focus again on, on the key pain point that the persona, the customers has to be able to basically um, make sure that you can deliver and not create some toxic uh, pipeline in, in, um, in your basically funnel, right? Sales funnel. Meaning that if you onboard customer where you cannot deliver, you will spend so much time taking care of them instead of bringing new customers, right? So delivery is something that is also very important uh, when you are early stage. And setting low expectation will help you to deliver. Then, of course, the most important part is to actually shut up. Meaning, when you get in front of a potential customers, very often you are so passionate about yourself on your product that you keep on talking about yourself. And there is nothing more boring than someone talking about himself on their product or herself, right? So the, the key rules here is quite simple. It's about 80% of listening versus 20% talking, right? And the great salespeople are actually great listeners. And how you can become a great listener is when you just use silence. Because silence is actually embarrassing, and it actually makes people talk, right? So if you ask good question and use silence, especially if you're on the phone, you will see people will start talking. Silence is the most powerful sales talk. So when we train actually salespeople to do sales call, I always have a piece of paper with one side is written shut up, and the other one is written smile, because you can also, see, you can also hear people uh, smiling on the phone. So don't forget to basically ask very pain-oriented questions, show a lot of empathy, but don't forget to shut up. And a good way to also see when you are talking too much and you want to basically get people to talk about their pain and discover that there is a fit with your product is when you start explaining your question. It happens to all of us. I mean, it still happens to me quite often. I ask a question and then I explain my questions because I'm afraid of silence, right? So very simple tip, but obviously not so easy to apply. And then there is the competition, right? And something that we do very often is we don't sell competition. We say how bad the competition is. And what you create here is actually the opposite of trust. Because maybe these customers or these poten potential customers or this person that you know has already this trust relationship that you haven't built with your competitor. And when you actually say how bad your competitors are, you basically just show that you are afraid of your competition. You should embrace your competition and understand why do you like the competitors? What problem are they solving for you today? And try to understand what type of features where you are stronger and understand as well how your competitors were able to solve problems for these customers that you were not able to do, right? So never, never downsell competition. To give you an idea, um, I mean a personal experience of what happened back in the days when we, when we work at Trustpilot on the sales floor, one of our competitors was down selling us all the time, telling to all their prospects how bad we are. And I'm telling you, like at some point, all the inbound calls that we had were just after they were talking to our competitors. And what happened is like they keep on talking about you during all the call and telling you, telling us how bad you are, this and this and this. So we figured they might just be so afraid, so we'll just call you up and see, you know, from your point of view. So obviously, what happened is that when you don't sell your competitors they will basically start looking themselves at their competitors and have their own opinion, right? And then, of course, the typical excuse is we are all afraid to pick up the phone, we are all afraid to do the hard job and to go face to face and get feedback, right? It's much more interesting to sit in a room with your colleagues and give compliment to one another and kind of agree how fast you're gonna change the world and make millions, right? But the truth is you don't need a marketing budget and you just need to pick up the phone, right? Pick up the phone, Talk to potential customers, don't forget to shut up, and forget your marketing budget. This is way more effective. You're an early stage startup. You don't need to raise money to do, get customers. You just need to pick up the phone. Make a list of potential customers in your first degree of connections, and then just ask to get meetings, and then during the meetings, do the discovery, ask questions, get up very empathetic to kind of get to the pain point, and basically get to talk to customers without a marketing budget. And quite too often we hear that 
uh, the phone channel is not working, we tried, or we tried to send cold emails and people don't reply, right? But of course it's not working from day one, right? And what do you think, if tomorrow you put 50,000 euro in a marketing budget, it's gonna work from day one? So just don't be afraid to basically pick up the phone and embrace the feedback. They will help you to grow way more than compliments. And then of course, um, nowadays it's super easy to copy others, meaning like, there is, I don't know how many hundreds of templates of uh, landing pages. If you want to basically do a landing page for B2B companies, there is many other tools that have been used. There is example of scripts if you want to do cold call or cold emails that you can get inspired. So always think that if someone, have, have someone already done this before me, right? And if so, don't be afraid to basically copy others and understand that it's completely okay to save time on this part of the process. There is many examples of sales funnels of B2B a CRM setup, and you just don't always need to set up everything from scratch. So don't forget that you are not the only company selling or building a B2B products. And if some companies have built billions of dollars valuation companies already in B2B, you must have some kind of best practice that you can basically copy and get inspiration from. And then, of course, that's the painful part of, of the journey. Let's say you are successful and you are not ready um, or you don't understand that every time you reach a milestone, you need to get ready for your new job. Because this is one thing to be able to basically get your first 50 customers, which is amazing and it's a lot, and many startups will never have more than 50, or never m have 50 customers at all, right? It's an amazing milestone. But then, when you need to hire a sales team, when you need to train a sales team, when you need to put a commission plan in, in place to pay commission for your sales team, when you need to go to new market and so on, this is a completely new job. And then the company that you were working for um, like a few months ago is now reaching a new milestone and it's not exactly the same company and this company has new challenge to reach and if you like it or not your job as a co-founder or your job as the first sales guy in that company is actually completely new so very often when we reach milestone with a startup I work with I always tell them congratulations you got a new job and they're like what do you mean yeah you got a new job you know work for a company that makes 1 million euro of sales per year and a few months ago you were working for a company that made barely hundreds of thousand euros of sales per year. It is definitely not in the same game. And then they just realized that you need to step up. And it's okay sometimes that you, you acknowledge that you are not ready for this and you want to step up, but also acknowledge that you now have competition for, for this new job. And then of course, um, when you are starting to scale and get to market, what is of course very important as well is to understand that sales is a number game. And if sales is a number game, it's basically a funnel. And the steps are quite simple, and I did not invent that. You can Google it. Uh, meaning like the B2B sales practice are quite simple. You need to have the qualify stage where you understand if uh, the customers that you want to reach is actually matching your ideal customer profile. Then during the discovery, we are not yet selling anything. We are just discovering if the product I have is actually matching or solving the pain that my potential customers have. And then eventually, that's when we start selling. And if we agree that the pain they have match my painkiller, which is my product, that's when I start closing. And these steps are quite simple. There is, of course, sub-steps for every single company that are a bit different. But then you can also use uh, data in your sales funnel, especially if you use a CRM or any other uh, tools to basically measure your sales process, and use this data to just repeat your success, right? And instead of having opinions across the team about what is our best um, ideal customer profile, what is the best person to reach and just base um, your next decision on opinions, you can leverage data from your CRM. It's much more valuable than opinions. And of course, the last tips is obviously to repeat, syst um, uh, systemize repeatable tasks. The sales um, in general in B2B is uh, very, very, very time consuming, but it's also very systematic. And if you do something more than once, you can actually systemize it. Meaning that if you can systemize it, you can basically scale it, you can give it to some specialist in the team, you can build a specialized sales team that have very clear KPIs in the different part of the sales funnel, and you can obviously scale it. And if you can systemize it, you can basically measure it. So these were basically the nine B2B sales tips that I learned by working with quite a, a few startups and going to market. And if we have some uh, young talents in the, in the, in the room, we are actually hiring more than 20 people with those two companies. So feel free to go on the website and apply to the you know, junior sales force that we have. So that was it for me. Thank you very much. And if you have some questions.